So in my last video, I talked about why the internet is making me so mad lately, and it seemed like a lot of you resonated with that, which is good because it helped me feel seen, but also kind of sad because mad is bad. But I think a lot of us are at this point where we're trying to navigate how to use our phones enough so that we still feel connected to the outside world, but not so much that it sucks us into the endless depression scroll. And that brings us to a few nights ago. I'm laying in bed with my internet flashlight two inches away from my face, you know, to help me fall asleep. And I get this ad from Instagram. No video, no information about the actual app that it's supposed to be advertising, just seven slides telling me to do a dopamine fast. And it got me thinking maybe I am relying too much on constant quick hits of dopamine to get me through the day. And maybe that's having an overall negative effect on my well-being. I mean, if I get bored for any more than two seconds, I will yank my phone out of my pocket and open up Twitter. Sometimes I'll be playing a video game and a loading screen or a cutscene that I'm not fully invested in will pop up and I'll pull my phone out to start playing a different game. God forbid 10 seconds go by where I'm not being fully stimulated by something. And so I'm starting to wonder how much subconsciously checking my phone at all hours of the day is having an effect on me. Have I trained myself to never focus too much on any one thing because I'm always willfully getting distracted? Like think about it, how can I train my brain to enjoy what I'm doing if in the back of my head, I feel the need to always be doing something else. I don't know, these are just questions, but perhaps the very device causing all of these issues could also be what holds the solution. That's right, I'm talking wellness apps, baby. I've been getting ads for a stupid number of them recently, and I figured why not just keep downloading them until my brain is fixed. Important rule for this video though, is that I will not be spending a single dollar. Every time I go down the targeted Instagram ad rabbit hole, I end up maxing out my credit card on a bunch of garbage garbage that's just gonna collect dust in my closet till the day that I die. Anyway, it's important to establish the no spending money rule because I was very tempted when a few people tagged me in this on Twitter, and I have to talk about this before I get into the rest of the video. In the first week using Arrow, my phone time went down 25% mom, wife, business owner. Every time you walk past it, it's like, oh, you know, leave your phone here and go be present, dad, husband, entrepreneur. Okay, so it's a box for your phone. But how does the phone get into the box? I have to be the one to put it there? Hmm. See, I would probably just choose not to. And therein lies the problem. See how we're kind of just right back at square one now? Like I already have time restrictions set on all my social media apps. And the only thing that that's changed is now I have to press two more buttons before I continue to use them. Which I never don't do, by the way. Arrow is the first in-home digital well-being solution designed for families. Well, I guess anything can be the first thing if you come up with a specific enough category for it. Arrow combines a beautifully designed smart box that holds and charges your phone with a motivating and encouraging app that, together, make it easy and fun to be away from your phone so you can focus on the things that really matter having sex with your wife. Wait, so before you put it in the box, you have to tell your phone why it's going in the box? Like it's gonna be mad if you don't have a good enough excuse? Now I'm sure you're wondering, how much does this life-changing device cost? And you're in luck because you can join Arrow for as low as $18. Of course, of course it's a membership. Of course, you have to subscribe to the box. So they have a monthly option or a yearly option, but even if you do the monthly option, you have to pay for it for at least a year before you can cancel, which means at minimum this is a $180 purchase for an empty box. Every so often an invention comes along that reminds you why human beings are at the top of the food chain. This is revolutionary technology. Can you believe that it only costs $200 to put your phone in a box? Like if you had asked me a week ago I would have said I don't know $30 million to put my phone in a box. So the fact that it's this cheap just shows you that they're not in it for the money. They're just doing it to make the world a better place. Luckily for me, I can actually take my own advice here and not pay for this because as I alluded to earlier, there's plenty of free options out there that might accomplish exactly the same thing. What's funny about this app is that this shit is not at all what the app is. There's no mention of a dopamine fast anywhere on the app. It's just some weird guy whispering at you, and if you wanna to listen to it forever, it's gonna cost 150 bucks. Right now you're using the most complicated artifact in the known universe to understand me. 
your brain. No thanks. So once I realized that I had no interest in what the actual app is, I figured why not just do the dopamine fast from the app? So for the next week, I will be letting these seven screenshots dictate my life and my choices. And I'll also check out some other wellness apps along the way. Let's get started. So this is definitely gonna be one of the harder days of the challenge for me, um, but I am actually kind of excited to be forced to do this. Without a doubt, Twitter is the very worst thing in my life that I am fully addicted to. It has become a second nature impulse for me to open it up during every moment of my life where nothing is happening. And I would like to eventually get rid of that impulse, especially because I don't know if Twitter even does anything for me at this point. It's just so much mental energy wasted on the most pointless conversations. Most of the time, it's just dumb person of the day saying the most asinine shit, like it should be illegal to own a dog with a bunch of quote tweets of people being like, um, no, it shouldn't actually. And they all have a hundred thousand likes. Even worse though, is then my dumb ass sits there like, uh, they're right. It shouldn't be illegal to own a dog. That's crazy talk. Boy, I'm just glad we were able to put an end to this discourse that was not only based on a hypothetical scenario some guy just made up, but that I never would have been made aware of in the first place had I not been here to witness it. On top of that, half of my For You page is just people going viral for stealing other people's TikToks. And then once they get enough attention on it, they'll take what I can only assume to be like $20 to advertise some seal pillow or pills that make your dick bigger. Which of course they deserve the money for because of all the hard work they put into downloading the video and reposting it with a caption. <laughs> I'm getting tired just thinking about all that work. Also content aside, it just breaks all the time now. Here's a new one that I think you'll really love because it still blows my mind to think about. For the longest time, the copy link button was here. So I knew if I wanna send a tweet to someone, I just click this button and then this button and then I can text it to them. But oh, wait, they moved the button. Okay, so now the bookmark button is where the copy link button used to be. So I accidentally saved the tweet when I was trying to send it to someone. Well, it seems kind of pointless that they would even switch that. But at least now that I know the buttons are moved, I can go ahead and open that back up and click the one on the left, which is somehow, again, the bookmark button. The buttons move now? Did Elon fire everybody? But that's this thing that blows my mind. I hate this stupid app and I still choose to spend two hours a day on it. And not to get too existential about it or anything, but like, that's a lot of fucking time that I'm wasting doing nothing. I do fear that one day, a lot of us in this generation are gonna look back on these precious years of our life and be like, oh my God, why did I waste so much time scrolling through shit that for the most part just made me feel worse? And yet, even as I say that, there's still part of me that's like, well, but that's where everyone one is. I gotta go see what they're talking about. It sucks and I'm tired of it. And today I'm finally making a change. Thanks to what the other social media app told me to do. Today is the day that I finally stop wasting my life and I step out into the real world and reach my full potential. <laughs> you know, I should probably do that more often. I was in a good mood pretty much all day. I still picked up my phone a lot out of habit, but I didn't stay on it very long because I wasn't getting sucked into a content vortex. I would say the worst part is just I had a little bit of FOMO, but uh, a lot of that is just paranoia for me being a slightly notable internet person. And I'm scared of what people may be saying about me if I'm not there to see it. Like what if I'm trending for some deep fake video of me beating up a child and I'm not there to defend myself so people just assume it's real, Drew. Your silence is deafening. Pretty challenging way to start, but I'm glad I did it. Uh, today though is no Netflix. And this is gonna be interesting because if I can't use Netflix all day, then my life is uh, gonna be pretty much exactly the same. I don't think I can even remember the last time I opened the Netflix app. It's one of those things I've almost entirely stopped using but continue to pay for because it feels essential. You know, just in case I wanna watch the Hangover Part 2, or Is It Cake, or The Hangover Part 3. I gotta be honest, I am so out on Netflix at this point. They make one million shows every year, most of them are awful, and even the ones that aren't get canceled after two seasons. What makes you think I'm gonna take the time to get invested in a show if there's only like a 5% chance they'll even get to finish making it? I don't trust you anymore, dude. Also, I'll say it, I'm tired of the binge model, okay? I like weekly releases. Part of the reason things like The White Lotus and The Last of Us have been so fun to watch is because there's a sense of community around them. 
you know? I feel like I'm a part of something every Sunday night when a new episode drops. We all waited the whole week for this. We all get to watch it at the same time and experience it together. And then I can go on the Twitter app that I hate and hear people talk about it. It's fun. If you drop eight episodes all at once, some people are gonna watch it all that night. Other people are gonna watch it over the course of a couple weeks. The people who watch it quickly feel like they can't talk about it yet because they don't know if everyone's done. The people who go too slow get made fun of for being busy when they accidentally see spoilers online. It's just not right, okay? This isn't the way TV should be. And I realize this, but this is sort of like a metaphor, you know, for how even though we want instant gratification all the time, sometimes being patient can actually result in a better experience. That episode can wait till next week you know, give it time to digest, to build up some anticipation for the next one. In the same way that your phone can wait until the end of the night. Just be in the moment now, here. Spend time with your loved ones. Cherish every second you have. Hey dad, can we go play football? Oh my god, are you fucking blind? I'm filming YouTube right now. Sorry, Papa. Okay. You know, and I think the reason they call it the present is because it's a gift. <laughs> If only Ted Cruz was doing this challenge a few years ago, then maybe he wouldn't have liked Twitter porn on 9-11. Never forget, that was a weird thing to do that day. I'm not exactly the target audience for this because I've been in a committed relationship for the past eight years, so I haven't looked at or even thought about porn in exactly eight years and one day. Boops, 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 blood, boops, blood, blood, blood. Uh, But even still, maybe we should go look at some of those other wellness apps to distract myself. I mean, just for fun. One of the first things I got an ad for was something called Inflow, where this woman is pretending to tell someone just off screen about the app instead of just looking at the camera. Now, I feel like I'm not the right person for this because I haven't been diagnosed with ADHD, although my Instagram ads sure are trying to. But the whole process for this, I'm really not a fan of. So they target people with an attention disorder. They tell them that this app will fix all the things they're struggling with. Look, we handpicked this module just for you to help you live to your fullest potential. But before you can look at it, that'll be $200. You can't try it until you promise to give us money in a week. Sure, you could cancel, if you remember, but we're specifically targeting people who are more likely to forget stuff. They say they have a forgiving refund policy, which is nice, but I don't think it would even be up to them because in-app purchases go through Apple, which means the refund would also have to go through Apple. And are they gonna have a forgiving refund policy? It just kind of seems like a promise you can't make because it would be out of your hands at that point. Okay, but what do you get for the $200 a year besides push notifications with some unbelievable claims? Well, you get some pretty generic options audio lessons, the kind of things you could probably find on YouTube or in podcasts for free. There's a community section where no one actually interacts with anybody else. Although it is kind of interesting to see the answers that other people came up with. And then they have challenges that you can do where you can put everything you've learned thus far to the test. Challenges like use this app. We recommend you do it for at least seven days. Gee, I wonder why. I can't think of a single reason why the minimum for this challenge would be seven days. Well, I can you need to pay for this after my trial ends? No. Here's an app that's supposed to help you sleep better. This one seems all right. They show you how much sleep debt you have. So if you're feeling extra tired, it might mean that you just need to catch up on sleep. Although most of us are probably already aware of that without needing an app to tell us, hey, you look kind of tired. Give me $50. I do think it's a little interesting to have actual metrics to look at that show you like when you can expect to have the most energy so you know when to try to be most productive. But I don't love that it sends you push notifications telling you you're about to be tired. I wasn't even tired when they sent this to me. You're gonna make me tired by making me think about being tired. Also, while I was initially impressed when I saw this graph and thought, how did they know that I have energy in the morning and then it dips and then it comes back? What are there, hidden cameras in my house? I then thought about it for one additional second and realized that that is probably true for 100% of people and could have been achieved by a lucky guess. Will I continue to pay for this after my trial ends? No. Definitely the most useless app is one called Schmoody, the first mental health app that's actually fun to use. I'm here to build better routines. Great, you're in the right place. You know, something tells me you would have said that no matter what I chose. I'm here to go to the bathroom. 
great. You're in the right place. The first thing this app does when you finish signing up is say, hey, you want to give us money? That'll be $40. And you're like, no thanks. And they say, hmm, you drive a hard bargain. How about $20? And you're like, hey, can you please stop doing that? And then you go to make an action plan because that's like the main feature of the app, but realize for some reason you can only do up to five things at a time. So your entire action plan for the day will be like, drink some water, brush your teeth, take a shower. And I guess that's it. That's my day. This app tries way too hard to be like different and cool. They sent me a notification the other day that was like, attention, do not open Schmoody. Okay, don't gotta tell me twice. And then the last app is called Opal and it looks like they can get my screen time down from 17 hours a day to just two hours a day. Now this is the life right here. This dude slept for 45 minutes at 3 a.m. and then jumped right back into Subway Surfers. So it looks like the app rewards you with pictures of gyms, the better your focus score is. The bad news is you're on track to spend 31 years of your life looking at your phone. The good news is we can help you get nine years back. Well, you've successfully scared me, so now's a good time to go ahead and ask me for money. Can I see what the app is first? Is that too much to ask? What happened to the good old days when you could start a free trial of something and when it ended, they'd just be like, hey, you can't use this until you pay. And if you don't wanna pay, that's fine. Now you have to commit to a yearly subscription within 30 seconds of downloading an app. I would be willing to bet that more than half of the expected profit from apps like these comes from people who forget to cancel their membership before the trial ends. Anyway, this one is kind of like a digital version of the phone box from earlier, but without a physical item to use. You start by making different app groups, so the ones that, I guess, distract you the most. For me, I'll do Twitter and Instagram and GoFundMe.com. I spend so much time donating on there. It's someone hold me back. Definitely the Home Depot app, the Measurement app. Actually, I should probably go ahead and block all of the other wellness apps. What, they're distracting me. I do think something like this would actually be more effective than phone in a box because you can have a predetermined schedule that you're beholden to rather than needing to be the one to decide to put your phone in the box. I could see this benefiting me a lot actually. I just think it's ridiculous that this costs a hundred dollars a year. This should just be included on the screen time app that comes with the phone. Also, the whole focus score thing is so fucking stupid. There's no nuance to it at all. It's not like, well, you were on your phone a lot this last hour, but it looks like you were on Gmail and Google Docs. So you were probably working, that's fine. No, it's literally just phone, bad. You use phone, bad score. You not use phone, good score. Wow, thanks for the insight, man. I wish this app was more expensive. Not much going on besides that. They have a leaderboard section, which is a little confusing, cause they'll be like, great job. You were in the top 40% of least amount of screen time yesterday but you were not in the top 10 of most time spent on this app. I'm sorry, do you want me to not use my phone or do you want me to look at you all day? I can't do both. So I looked for free alternatives and I found an app called Screens In, which is basically this, but with even more features. You can make it so instead of just blocking an app altogether, you're limited in how many times you can unlock it for the day. And you can even make it so you have to wait a little bit longer every time it unlocks. Unlocked. And this actually works really well for me because I would click to open Twitter and be like, oh wait, I only have a few more unlocks left for the day. Do I really wanna waste one now? No, nah, I'll save it for later. And then I just never opened it again. Also, this app is free. So if you want to spend $100 on something that has fewer features, but is prettier to look at because they have photos of diamonds, go for it. Um, but I would recommend that you don't. <laughs> I feel like phone games get kind of a bad rap just because the ads are almost always misleading and there's like lawsuits over microtransactions and you know they're used in TikToks and are whittling away the attention span of children. Hey, don't look at the TV, look at me. But I think there's actually some real gems out there and I'm not talking about the Opal gems from, the la from yesterday. Ever heard of Golf Odyssey? 
It's like the Dark Souls of 2D golf games. What's hard about it is you only get two chances on every hole, and if you lose on one of them, you have to start all of them all over again. So you basically have to be perfect for 20 straight holes in order to win. And it took me like three weeks to finally do that. Retro Bowl, another perfect game. Why would I spend $70 on Madden every year when EA stopped giving a shit about that series like 15 years ago, when I could just play this game for free? In one of my saves, I'm on year 54, my coach is 89 years old, and retirement is not an option for him. Thanks to all the presumed advances in medicine at this point in the future, I can safely force this man to coach my football team until he's just a pile of bones being dragged across the sideline. I'm also really good at this sliding puzzle game. My high score is 12 seconds. I can go a full day without playing any of these games, though. That's not the issue. The problem is, some games you have to play every day or your streak ends. And for a lot of these games, the only reason I still play them is to continue my streak. You see, like a lot of people, I used to play Wordle every day. And I never lost because that game is for babies. But then one day, I went to bed early and forgot to play for that day. So my streak ended at like 120. And I was so devastated that I closed that Chrome tab and never opened it back up. But I didn't just do Wordle, okay? I also did Quirtle, and Purtle, and Turtle, and Cine 2 Nurtle, and Framed, and Square Word. Not all of them wrong. But the one I still play now is called Mathler. And you have to come up with an equation in order to get the number. And I realize that saying that out loud sounds very dumb, but it's all I have. My daily streak is in the 50s. And you're gonna take this away from me just because of some stupid challenge? Last year, I dyed my hair blue and it stayed that way for four months. But this right here is the biggest sacrifice I've ever made for this YouTube channel. So you better smash that freaking like button. It's gonna be a lot harder than the Netflix one was because I actually do go on YouTube every day. But I mean, have you ever seen some of the videos on here? They're so wacky. They got comedy videos, informative videos, food videos, videos about food that are comedic and informative. You can watch really cool demos for guitar pedals and be so blown away by how cool it sounds that you decide to spend $300 on the guitar pedal only to realize that you have no fucking clue how to use it. You can save recipes for meals you'll never make. You can watch three hour video essays about shows you'll never watch. It's the perfect website except for all the bad videos that make it a terrible website. I guess I can avoid it for one day. Um, let's see what's going on on the rest of the internet. How do you even know how old mucus is? My head hurts now. We made it everyone, the end of the week. I'm calm, I'm enlightened, and I'm mucus free. Today will be the culmination of everything I've gone through up until this point, and uh, this is gonna be very hard. My morning started by realizing that my toothbrush has a screen on it, so I guess I'll just have stinky mouth today. I'm pretty sure everything I do for work or for fun involves a screen. This means no TV, no video games, no computer, so I can't edit at all, which is like my job. No looking at my phone. Damn, if only I had a box to put it in. This is so scary. Well, what if I get lost and I need my GPS? What if I get a time sensitive text message or phone call? Or what if my wife accidentally steps into a hot air balloon at work and they didn't put any sandbags on it so there's no way for it to come back down once it starts floating up and she just keeps going higher and higher and by the time the day is over and I can finally look at my phone again, she's already up in space. It's cold up there and she didn't bring a jacket. Well, I'm pretty hungry. Guess I could drive somewhere. <laughs> Who put screens in my car? Fine, I'll eat my leftovers. Who put screens on my microwave? Kobe. Hey, I guess windows are kind of like TV, huh? They just only have the one channel. Hello, wife. I missed you today. You're doing that no screens challenge? I heard about that on TikTok. Talk. About what? No, I was saying it's called TikTok. Whatever. You're only paying attention to me because you're bored. Well, yeah, duh. That's the whole point. I'm learning to love you. 
Even though as a mere human, you could never provide as much entertainment or stimulation as my cell phone, which I do miss. I wanna watch a movie. No! So as I spent my night watching the reflection of La La Land off my wife's glasses, a loophole that isn't against the rules as far as I'm concerned because they didn't say you couldn't do it in the ad. If you weren't allowed to look at screens through reflective surfaces, they would have mentioned that somewhere in the rules. But as I watched the mirror image of one of my top five favorite Ryan Gosling musicals, I realized I don't think I need screens after all. My cat doesn't give a shit about screens and she seems happier than I am most of the time. Hell, whenever I try to get her to look at my computer, it just stresses her out. You know, I could probably learn a thing or two from her. She's so wise. My ancestors didn't have screens and they survived just fine. I mean, not as long as they could have, probably because of like the plague and stuff, but that's not something an Xbox would have prevented. Life is filled with so much potential for joy. You just gotta be willing to look up from your phone every once in a while to see it. There's beauty in everything around you. The ambient noises of nighttime outside your window. The cat grass you bought slowly dying behind your sink because you don't know how to take care of plants. Uh, fucking, I don't know, silverware is pretty shiny to look at. Oh, thank God. Wow, what a week. I feel like I've really matured, you know? Now, obviously this Instagram ad was an oversimplification of what would probably be a much longer term fix, but I don't think just cutting out one thing you enjoy every day is gonna suddenly rewire your brain. All it's gonna do is make you wanna do those things even more, so then the next day you'll just go twice as hard to make up for lost time. It's like if you've ever gone on a short term diet, like, I don't know, the TB12 diet for exactly one month, where the entire goal is to just avoid certain foods, but without establishing viable alternatives, as soon as the diet's over, you're gonna be so excited to eat all of the foods you missed out on for the past month that you'll almost immediately undo all the work you did. Because you didn't really learn anything new, you just avoided something for a few weeks. I guess what I'm trying to say is sometimes sheer willpower isn't enough. It's like there should be a, almost like a, like a box that you put your phone into. Oh my God, I just thought of the best invention. I call it phone box, and it's a place to put your phone when you don't wanna use it. And then once you're ready to give your phone a second chance, you just pull it right back out. Hey, wait a minute. This isn't my phone. This is a bunch of fresh ingredients mailed directly to my door. What gives? I'll tell you what gives. This video is sponsored by HelloFresh. You were in on it this whole time? That's right. No matter what I'm in the mood for, HelloFresh always has my back. I made some risotto the other day for the first time in a while. Oh my God. It is so good. The only downside of risotto is that it's a labor of love. You know, it's pretty time consuming. Luckily, HelloFresh understands that you don't always want to spend that much time in the kitchen. And if you want to get something done quickly, instead, they've got plenty of other meals that you can opt for. This week alone, I made honey mustard chicken salad wraps, steak and potatoes, and falafel power bowls. And they each took less than 15 minutes to make. The other thing I tend to worry about the most in the kitchen is what is this food going to do to my body? And HelloFresh is here to help us make good, healthy choices. It's super easy to organize your search options to show you the healthiest meals, which are marked with tags to help you decide which one is the best for you that week. I swear by HelloFresh because they've helped me get more confident in the kitchen over the years and also introduced me to a bunch of different meals that I probably would have been too lazy to try otherwise. Spending an hour walking around Publix trying to find 17 different ingredients, half of which I'll probably never use again after this one meal. No thanks. Just send me exactly what I need in a refrigerated box and call it a day. Plus with groceries only getting more and more expensive lately, there's never been a better time to try HelloFresh for yourself, especially because I have a new promo code. Go to HelloFresh.com and use my code I'm a little stinker 60 for 60% off your order plus free shipping. Thank you so much to HelloFresh for sponsoring today's video. Now back to that weird little guy from earlier. Hey, I'm not little. Thank you for watching video. Hope you like, I like make. Sorry, YouTube has this new policy where you only get a limited number of words to say in every video and as soon as you run out of them, they'll just cut you off in the middle of a